Okay, uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, to some of you, I know it maybe it's good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on where, with where you are joining us from. So I take the opportunity to welcome all of you. Uh, just to check if you're communicating, uh, you can just indicate maybe thumbs up or just say something on the chat that will help us to know that we are engaging and we're able to communicate with you. I can take a confirmation from two, three people. Yeah, thank you so much, Rosemary. You can see uh, you're indicating we are communicating well. Uh, either do it digital is also okay. A thumbs up digitally or just unmute and say, yes, here I am or something. Thank you, Mr. Mwangi. You can see we are communicating well. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Good, so uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you for this session. Uh, we've been looking forward to this opportunity uh, just to be able to engage and uh, to see how to better our lives in the different domains of life that uh, God has entrusted to us. And uh, I'm sure we're ready to be able to learn quite a lot especially on the domain of uh, health or physical. Uh, basically, there are many other domains that are very important to each and every one of us, starting with spiritual domain. We have intellectual domain. And tonight, we just want to focus on the physical or health or whatever the expert will call it tonight as uh, she takes us through. Uh, the other domains include social amongst others. So, uh, I'll just want to welcome all of you. Uh, some of you have already sent your advanced questions, uh, but uh, still we'll open our chat platform uh, so that we can be able to maximize on time. So as the speaker will be going on, uh, the chat platform will be open. Uh, you can share any question, and then we'll be able to look at that uh, towards the end of the presentation, and uh, we'll be able to uh, reply to the question at the appropriate time. Otherwise, uh, we just want to say a word of prayer, then I'll invite the speaker uh, just to be able to move on. So let's pray. God, we are grateful uh, for such a wonderful opportunity uh, as we continue to engage and discuss on issues of health and nutrition. Uh, we are praying for a deeper understanding and also your perspective on these issues, oh God, so that we can be properly aligned uh, according to your will, and uh, that we may be able to fulfill your purpose uh, in this world more effectively, more efficiently, and more so we may be able to live our full life according to your plan. This evening, we want just to trust you that this engagement will be fruitful, will be fulfilling, and will be transformational. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Uh, some of the questions that came uh, or comments they may not be questions. Some of them might be comments. Uh, the advanced questions, comment, include uh, the ones that I've listed on the chat there, or on, the, on the slide there. Uh, some of the participants, they indicated they just want to learn more about their nutrition. Uh, others, uh, uh, some of them... Uh, let me mute that. Sorry for that. Uh, how to have a healthy living habits or to learn about healthy living habits. Uh, someone else indicated could diet cause high blood pressure. Yeah. Mm. Uh, then someone else said I would like to have an overview on how to how best to feed uh, the portions in terms of carbohydrates, vitamins. I usually have breakfast and supper. Is that healthy? And uh, someone else also indicated just want to learn more. So uh, our speaker will be able to also respond to some of these issues. Uh, maybe some of them will come in, in between the presentation or some she may want to take specifically to address the issues. I just want to also inform you that we are recording this session uh, so that we can be able to help more other people who might not be able to join us tonight. Otherwise, with those few remarks, I want to take the opportunity uh, to welcome uh, uh, Rosemary Masharia. 
uh, who is an expert in this area. I'm sure that by the end of the day, we'll be able to appreciate the wealth of knowledge, experience, and skills that she'll be able to convey to us. I want to welcome you, Rosemary Masharia. Please take care. Now I can listen to this. Thank you so much for uh, everybody who is logged in. Uh, welcome everybody and welcome to Maryland where I'm calling from. It's about uh, 12, maybe almost 12 lunchtime. And uh, it's so good to see everyone uh, who is logged in. So thank you for uh, joining. And, um, I just want to introduce myself by saying that I, yes, uh, as indicated in the forum, I am a nutritionist and on a daily basis, that's what I do as a, for my job and I'm a diabetes educator. So today I would like to share some information on diabetes. I'm a new author and the book covers all, almost all, even the topics that we are asking that I just received, the two questions, which was healthy living habits and whether they can cause blood pressure and the uh, carbohydrates, vitamins, skipping meals. So, and of course, if you, there's more questions to come, we're going to address it as we go. But I just uh, wanted to thank you for joining us, Mr. Mwangi for joining us from Yeri, and everywhere else where people are logging in. It's good to have you all. And I'm gonna share my screen so that we can start the presentation. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to start this uh, presentation is fighting diabetes in our communities. However, we're going to include everything else in general health and wellness. And as always, I always want to start with uh, what God wants for all of us. If we read the book of Third John chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, above all, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. So good health is ours. Good health is given. And we want to get it through healthy living habits, healthy lifestyles, healthy eating. Of course, uh, like uh, Carrie had described, there's many aspects to it. And this one today is on healthy eating. So again, there's always um, something in America that is done in April. I don't know whether Kenyan in Kenya practice this, but based on the book of Daniel, people go on healthy eating for a month, call it the Daniel fast, uh, which means they eat a lot of vegetables in that month. They eat well, they eat healthy. Uh, they call it like a fast, you know, to not be something that you're giving up. It should not be uh, a one time, one month thing, healthy eating needs to be continuous and it needs to be a daily thing. So again, when you're fighting diabetes, eating healthy is a major part of it. So today we're gonna discuss things like what is diabetes management? Uh, how does, what are the blood sugar numbers that are good or safe so that you don't get those diabetes side effects? And how, how can you prevent diabetes? in order to prevent the damages that come from it or that, that come with uncontrolled diabetes. We're also gonna talk about the carbohydrate foods. And more than that, we're gonna discuss other questions that might, be, that might come up as, as we continue with this. So uh, based on what actually our, our parents and grandparents and great grandparents were eating, they were all eating balanced meals more than what we, we do today. They were mainly doing what 
we call plant-based foods with occasional meat. They were also eating what we call whole foods. In other words, they were eating corn or maize in the original form, the way it comes straight from the farm. They would eat beans, they would eat uh, mokimo and all the, and they would hunt and, and get fish from Lake Victoria or Tana River, wherever you live in the, um, you know, in the, or if you leave it, live near the coast, there's a lot of fish there. So this is a balance, how we get to balance diets. However, while our parents were eating whole grain food or whole grain nutrition, uh, we don't do that anymore. We have changed from corn to corn flakes, which is broken down processed version. So I wanna go over what would be the whole grain corn before we get anything out of it. So this picture kind of shows all that. Whole grain corn contains a couple of three things. It's kind of rough, what we call fiber or bran. And on the inside, we have the starchy part A. All right, please mute yourself. Okay. And then we have the inner part, which is the wheat germ. I mean, if you're eating maize, you will see that little yellow part. So most of the time when these products are processed, what happens is the outer part is removed. If you see the difference between white bread and brown or whole grain, whole grain is browner and it's not as soft. It has nothing but this part right here in the middle. And called the germ. Whether it's wheat germ or corn, this little part right here contains healthy fats that are really good cells. So our parents and grandparents, they used to eat better because they were getting all this. They were eating it as a whole grain. So uh, we could bread and then they add some of the vitamins that were removed. So add it back and call it enriched. It's not doing us a favor. However, that's how it's sold. So those who want to buy enriched bread, they have it. Those who want to buy whole grain, they got it. But I, I would recommend definite vitamin E, yeah? which is sold mostly as corn oil or sold if it's wheat, they sell it as wheat germ. Okay, so it looks like little sprinkles. Bran contains all the vitamins and also the fiber. fiber is a very huge deal. It's very important because most of them are preventable when we keep brand going as part of our diet. The other thing that we did that our great grandparents never did is add sweet beverages, uh, sodas, lemonades, fruit punch, you name it. And of course, there are other things like wine and the reason why I, I wrote here, except not everybody does that because not everybody drinks, but we do have alcohol, alcoholic drinks that are full of carbohydrates. They used to drink what? Water, mazua lala, you know, the milk and porridge, millet porridge, very nutritious things. Hopefully it is coming back to most places. The last time I visited Kenya, they had Right. So this is what we call processed foods. So processed food that is used, you know, of course, the mandazi flour is the finest of all, is the really very light. It has removed everything. Um, of course, chapatis that are, why do I, I have this here as examples because most of the white flour products, whether you're eating a cake or a morning, they, de they do tend to spike blood sugars more than if you eat githeri or corn because that's a whole grain and these are processed. So when it's processed, it cause the effect of blood sugar you know, to go up 
up quickly, what we call sugar spikes. It will spike up quicker. All right, so we always want to compare and say, instead of this, what else can we do? I think instead of donuts or croissants and cakes, what can we eat in the morning? We could do whole grain bread. We could do whole, we could do millet. We could do oatmeal or barley. There are so many foods. We can eat guache. We can eat uh, bananas, you know, roasted bananas. All those are healthy foods that can replace most of the processed things that we do. And really, it doesn't matter whether we got money or not. People with money eat more worse because they, they tend to buy more of these products. All right. So, um, uh, a mandazi and a soda is a meal. Uh, that's not a good idea at all. So, we could do better by buying whole grain chapatis, brown, or maybe mokimo instead of those things. So what, when it comes to healthy eating and food choices. All right, so one of the things that the World Health has uh, recommended is that we choose healthy diets. They have also said Western style diets have been proven through research to cause obesity. So now all we have to ask ourselves is what is a Western diet, Western style? So Western is this hemisphere where people eat hamburgers, where people eat pizza, where people eat pastries and donuts. Because they led into that, they have been major leaders of fast foods. They are also the major leaders in diabetes, heart diseases. So we don't wanna follow that trend. We are already being warned. Now it's up to you to choose whether you wanna go to McDonald's every day or you wanna eat uh, a healthier diet. All right, because of that, we have seen an increase in diabetes very, very much in many states here. And that's what we're trying to prevent in Kenya because it has come to those, I mean, every, almost every household you hear is you know happening like somebody is having diabetes. You know, this one is having problem with their eyes. This one is having problems with their feet. So the signs and symptoms of diabetes, how does that look? Before you get diabetes, you most people have these symptoms. They start feeling like they're always hungry. They just ate. And now you have one soda after the other drinking cold water, drinking juice, and yet you're very thirsty. Your job is not to drink and run to the, uh, you, you know. So you, it, it keeps going, it keeps going. So once you notice something like a student or you see it in a coworker, ask them what is going on. Can you go get your blood sugar tested? Because if you get it tested and find out that before the, the numbers get too high, it's easier to control it, reverse. Yeah, it is reversible. Even though we say there's no cure, it is reversible. But because when you, if you can reverse it and go all the way back to good numbers, if you start redoing the same thing that caused it, that brought it upon you, it tends to go, to go back. So now here we have uh, green, which is normal blood sugar. The yellow, which comes when doctors start saying you have prediabetes. Prediabetes is not diabetes, but it looks like it's you know heading that way. Uh, and of course, then it goes to the red when you hit those numbers that are called uh, diabetes, high blood sugar. You could start reversing it quickly as soon as the doctor you know these are the symptoms I'm having. Let me go get tested. If the doctor says it is, then where do I go from there? You start. You start going back by changing a couple of things. Um, we all know that uncontrolled diabetes has complications. The, the major complications is the heart. Diabetes is a very a sneaky disease because you don't feel pain, 
sometimes you don't even know the sugar is high, but that doesn't mean the silent damage is not happening. And that's not just diabetes, also blood pressure has its own damage like that, silent damage to the kidneys. But diabetes has more because it can cause heart attacks, it can cause stroke, it can cause uh, legs to have all these needle-like pains where you get up in the morning and you can barely walk, right? It causes damages to the eyes. Uh, that's why you, and then it causes a big problem called dialysis, nephrology, kidneys. Kidneys are affected. So how do this damage happen? When the sugar goes up in the blood, in the bloodstream, um, the little veins or the smallest ones like the eyes, because everything gets a blood supply, the smallest veins, arteries, uh, they, can't, they get overwhelmed by the sugar. And when they get overwhelmed, there's no room for the oxygen to be delivered to those parts. So you will see people with severe complicated diabetes, they start having kidneys, have those kind of vessels, the blood vessels. There are tiny blood vessels in the kidneys, tiny blood vessels in the eyes, and tiny blood vessels in the toes, extremities. So you hear somebody with diabetes saying, I have a wood that's not healing. Why not healing? Because there's no air supply, uh, ox supply reaching that because the sugar becomes a blockage, right? Cholesterol can also do that damage as well. And we're gonna talk about how all these damages are happening. Here's one example. Um, diabetes can cause this because the thickness in the blood, the thickness of the blood sugar tends to help cholesterol, if you're eating high cholesterol diet, tends to help it start loading up in the blood vessels like this. And this yellow part, which is the cholesterol, can continue expanding and increasing and increasing until it closes this. This is a very clear blood vessel. No problem there, blood is going through very well. But when you look at it this way, uh, hold on, I think I didn't do that. Oh, right. So I was going to try to see if I can do it another way. But anyway. So close to where the blood is not going, is not passing through anymore. And if it's not passing through, uh, then we have a big problem of closures, all right? So this here is showing an example of a very healthy heart and example of a blood vessel that is closed up. Okay, so this is the blood vessel right here that is providing oxygen to the heart. The heart mu muscle has its own uh, cells and its own uh, vessels that feed the heart muscle so it can pump blood. And when the vessel blocks like this, you will see that the heart is dying on one on the one side. And these are the things that cause uh, heart attacks because the vessel is closed up. Again, diabetes is a major cause of it. So you will hear people dying from heart attacks out of nowhere is because of those things, all right? It could go to the brain and it will cause stroke. So we wanna be very careful with reversing blood sugar, all right? What's the first thing we do? We do need to um, use more plant-based foods. More, we call it plant-based, but basically eating the old way, how we were eating more guaches, more the very more of uh, fish with natural organic maize uh, that we would take to the factory and get the original flour that had everything in it. So if the maize were like this, it would be complete harvested, taken to the factory, and turned into flour. Those are whole grains and they prevent that. We want to, uh, um, of course, get rid of these sodas, 
this, the amount of little dots and designs on this side just indicates how much sugar is in this can of soda, in this bottle. Um, this one has, and they are very small, whether it's Fanta, whether it's Sprite. And they use the cheapest sugar uh, called high fructose corn syrup, which is very bad for the body and causes uh, that kind of problem leading to diabetes. We can drink more tea and uji and water, things that are much, much healthier. Uh, of course, the other thing that we need to add back if we haven't is whole grains. Whole grain, the way the grain comes. If you're buying millet, it's the whole grain. You mix your millet with sorghum and corn or maize. That's a very healthy thing. If you use oatmeal, then that's another whole grain. If you use barley, uh, then that's another one. Grits is just, uh, I think in Kenya, what we call uh, jenga. Grits, it's a whole maize before it's you know chopped up. Sometimes people use it almost as oatmeal, like a cereal in the morning. And if it's cold cereal like Cheerios, that's in total, that's whole grain. So we can use side dishes that are also whole grain. A lot of people who are in America use uh, oatmeal to make the ugali, to mix into the ugali because the ugali here flour is not, it's very processed. So you mix it up with something that will help bring it back to the whole grain. We have brown rice, barley, wild rice, quinoa. All those are things that are very high in fiber, high in vitamins, high in minerals. This is what we're trying to heart diseases, heart health, many diseases. Is this like cancer prevention because you're having now high fiber foods. And of course, diabetes, blood sugar is always slowed down by fiber. Just remember that one, every if you have diabetes. Uh, are there other healthy carbohydrates? Of course, this is what our parents and grandparents were eating. These are whole foods straight from the farm. You can eat potatoes. Potato is not our enemy. The reason why people complain about potatoes is because they have been French frying them, dipping them in oil and fried potatoes are not the same as boiled or even roasted and cooked potatoes. Potatoes are very good. They have vitamins, they have minerals and they have a little bit protein in them. So you could eat sweet potatoes, you know, the pink potatoes, uh, cassava, green banana, healthy. Not the same as eating cookies and cakes and beans and legumes. Complete food because it has both protein and it has starch or carbohydrate in it. So it's a complete food because it has that. And then it has vitamins and minerals. Uh, that are very helpful in the body, including iron. So most people who are anemic, <clears throat> they need to eat more beans and combine it with leafy greens because iron gets absorbed better when you mix it with greens. So the way the Kikuyus were making this, they were making beans with leafy greens like marege or pumpkin leaves, hada, terere, I don't even know what they are called, all of them, they are all good. They contain beans, contain something called soluble fiber. Now, the good part about soluble fiber is that it is the, the fiber that gets inside the blood and helps remove cholesterol. So lentils and beans are in the same category. They are very low fat compared to meat. So if you're eating a protein, because protein can be meat, it could be eggs, it could be beans. So if you're eating beans, you're not eating anything fat. You're not eating anything cholesterol. Cholesterol only comes in animal products. So if you're eating uh, beans and lentils, you're going to get low fat, high fiber, iron, and B vitamins, right? So again, beans contain that fiber that removes cholesterol out of the body or out of the blood vessels. So that blood vessel that we were looking at 
that was completely clogged up. If you go to the doctor and they say you have a lot of high cholesterol, <clears throat> you leave out things that have cholesterol, which is animal-based foods, and go more into lentils and beans, uh, and you will see that it will start changing. Uh, of course, they help with blood pressure because they're very high in potassium. So things that are high potassium, like vegetables and beans, they help you control your blood pressure. So we also need to increase vitamins and minerals from the, veg, the veggie group. Now, I included this one for other reasons, not just for diabetes. Uh, fruits and vegetables are healing foods. They have what we call phytonutrients or antioxidants. High in vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, all of them, including these two, potassium and magnesium. Very good for lowering blood pressure. So somebody had asked that question. Uh, would healthy eating habits cause blood pressure? No, it would decrease. So if you're eating these fruits right here, it would decrease blood pressure, all right? We need potassium, we need magnesium to lower it. Um, high fiber foods like, cans like uh, cabbages, broccoli, kale, you know, skumawiki, those are cancer fighters. So they're good for diabetes, but they're also good for other healthy, you know, prevention of cancer, prevention of uh, blood pressure, prevention of cholesterol, high fiber. They remove cholesterol out of the blood as well. Uh, okay, so let's say somebody already has been diagnosed with uh, diabetes and they want to know how so that it's not too high in carbohydrates. So we need to know what foods have, uh, have here. I hope I can move this. Okay. So now we have carbohydrates and non-carbohydrates. So the non-carbohydrates are stuff like vegetables, like broccoli, cabbage, you name it. Anything that's called vegetable is not gonna have carbohydrates. Meats, like fish or chicken or turkey, they don't have carbohydrates. Fats, like peanut butter, cooking oils, they don't have carbs. So yes, potatoes have carbs, rice, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, all the starch, but it's not a bad thing to eat. Okay, we have the bad ones and the good ones. All right, beans and corn are carbohydrates, but great carbohydrates. Milk and yogurt are also carbohydrates, but perfect, good. They have a lot of uh, protein, so it's also included. Now, what are the worst carbohydrates? Corn, but they the store, those are just loaded with sugar. So but once you have diabetes, you really have to balance your plate. Diabetes, you can do a lot of greens. You can do a lot of greens. You can do a lot of uh, smaller amounts of rice, or you can do better by adding potatoes instead of rice or adding a cup of beans or a cup of bebe, you know, mukimo right there. Small amount of meat or fish. Right? You don't have to have fish, but you wanna balance. So uh, again, this is a way, this is a way to balance proteins as well. So we don't have to have red meats all the time. Choose more lean meat like fish. Uh, beans, of course, low fat right there. Okay, what is wild caught fish? Okay, this word sounds only good and fancy in, in the US, I guess. In Kenya, most fish are wild caught because you go to the fish, to the uh, river and, cut and catch your own, or you go to uh, the, the store where they're bringing fish straight from the ocean and you buy that, or from Lake Victoria, if you live there, you fish, you eat, that's, that's what we call organic. 
but because we have so many here that are called a farm raised, that's why this says wild caught. Uh, so uh, if you're buying fish, of course you're buying wild, uh, farm raised. That's what they bring to Africa. Uh, remember that the fish that come in a shell, like shrimps and, and crabs, are high cholesterol fish. They are not the same as steak fish. They are not the same as catching, uh, you know, uh, what tilapia or whiting or almond. Those are not, they have no cholesterol. But anything in a shell, then like an egg or shrimp, it's going to have cholesterol in it. So this are balancing, how to balance. If you have diabetes or you have heart or you just want to eat healthy, balance your plates. You're going to make it very, you can add githeri to a, you can add githeri to a soup full of vegetables. Uh, you can create different recipes that will allow you to eat healthy without loading your body with cholesterol. The other thing that we could use is high cholesterol, um, I mean, non-cholesterol cooking fats. So when you're cooking with vegetable oils or safflower oil or canola, or olive, uh, these are healthy, no cholesterol fats. If you're using avocados, it is a healthy fat. And most people use avocado instead of butter to put on their sandwich because it is a healthy fat. Uh, if you're using nuts, cashews, almonds, peanuts, of course, that's a healthy You can limit stuff like bacon, butter. Everything that comes from animals is going to have cholesterol. And those are cholesterol examples right there. Oh, I just uh, mentioned the low cholesterol meals have, you know, like oatmeal and whole corn is high fiber and high fiber will help improve the cholesterols and keep our blood vessels healthy. And the last thing here is to select. Always, if you have diabetes, remember that even though this is 100% juice, it's gonna have carbohydrates. You're better off eating a fruit instead of drinking juice come with the fiber. If you're drinking, uh, if you're eating an orange, you're eating drinking oranges, you're getting on the juice part. Quick to make the blood sugar go up. You know the sodas, it's obvious, very high. All right, so we also need to stay active, stay, uh, if you're walking, walking is the best. You don't need to go to the gym, keep walking. It brings the blood sugar down, cholesterol, and on and on. All right, so I finished by saying we need to let food be our medicine, okay? And that is repeated backwards by saying, let medicine be your food. In other words, the only medicine you take, if of course you're sick and you're taking medication, you don't jump and quit, but gradually when you improve, you can get to that level. All right, thank you very much. And uh, now we can go to any questions if, there is any questions. So I will stop sharing. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Rosemary Washira. I can see we have uh, a question from, from Mr. Mwangi uh, on the chat. Yes. Okay. Yeah, defined table sugar, which is an addict uh, dative in almost all fast food is a major culprit in poor health. I don't know if either you have a comment on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, table sugar is definitely one of the processed things. So it's always a good idea to avoid adding table sugar to everything you're drinking. So it's not just this, but also the amount of sugar that you in your drinks, like tea, uh, fast foods. We don't recommend fast foods because those process, you know, instead of getting chicken, you're eating nuggets. Instead of getting, it's not a healthy way of living. So you want to continue selecting whole foods, what we call whole foods before it's processed. So fast foods have nothing like that. 
If you go to a fast food, you get with fat, and this is not good with sugar, and you're getting loaded with something called sodium. Salt, in other, so without even knowing, they're taking a lot of salt when you eat them. Stuff like pizza, loaded with salt. And the salt, when you exceed the amount, it's a major cause of blood pressure or hypertension. So yeah, we don't recommend them. What do you, what's the other question? Yeah, we have also another question. Uh... Uh, GMOs. Yeah, on GMOs. Yeah, probably. So genetically modified foods, mm -hmm. they, they produce more. Hmm? Yeah, GMOs. Is grain. Oh, God, get gluten free food. Why was it there? A few years. It's because they, get, they GMO'd all the wheat. So now getting is something they cannot digest. So, best. Question. Yeah, quite a number. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your view on the use of supplements? I know nowadays you're talking quite a lot about supplements. Maybe you can mention something on that. Um, yeah, supplements are very good, especially who live in, in places that they are not getting all the nutrients that you should. So, but it's a supplement. That means you're eating something and then you're supplementing it. So you're adding to it. And there are some supplements um, that I, I, I use supplements and I recommend supplements, but food. So yeah, it's okay to buy uh, some vitamins, minerals. They, they are very helpful. Arbos, that would be okay. Uh -uh. Can you mute yourself? Milk, okay. please mute yourself. Milk, please mute. All right, so there was a question here that I'm saying. I don't know whether you read that. And, uh, oops, it's uh, something about eating carbohydrates just before. And this guy, all the food, when you eat, it's good to uh, give yourself at least uh, two hours before you go and lie down so that the food is digested a little bit. And you will hear some people who have a severe reflux if they just eat and then lie down. So uh, yeah, whether you're eating carbohydrates or any other food, after you eat the dinner. Okay, Carrie, you have any other questions? Yeah, there's a question Please from uh, from David Okello. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I reduce the urge of taking a soda each time I feel my sugar level is low? Or would I consider this a disorder? No, it's not a disorder. Actually, you can, uh, it's because you can, you start changing, see that your blood sugar will not surprise you. It will not go down to where you need a soda. 
And if it does, if you feel like that, you should eat a banana. Uh, corn syrup, fruit, high fructose corn syrup, which is not good for the blood at all. So yeah, you can do that. And uh, do you have diabetes or are you just feeling like low blood sugar? Whoever asked the question. Is it because you have diabetes or? Make sure you you would miss the difference. Start with breakfast that is whole grain. Eat a lunch that is also complete like beans and corn, bebe, corn, maize. Uh, eat complete meals for three or two days. You see the problem is starting to resolve. You will not have low sugars if you eat it well. And if you do, email me. You can ask Joseph, for the number, if you do have uh, any more low sugars after that, after you eat. Okay, uh, there's another question from Maureen. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it healthy to wake up at midnight and eat a snack? Waking up is probably because you didn't eat well. So people don't wake up to eat at night unless they forgot or you fell asleep before you had time to eat dinner. And no, it's not a healthy thing because you're gonna eat and lie down. Uh, it's because it's at midnight. No, it's not a good thing. And most of the time when you wake up at midnight, you're not eating a very healthy meal. You're probably eating a with night for dinner. And, and not conflicts. But it's not a good idea to wake up and eat. Try to eat a good meal. Uh, hour to an hour and a half before bed, you have eaten your dinner. And drink enough water. OK, thank you so much for that. Uh, Karen Bogua. I, uh... I think this is a follow-up question. So she's asking, uh, what did you say about skipping meals? For example, not having lunch. Yeah, I think uh, this is uh, she, uh, this is a follow-up on uh, the previous question. So maybe you can mention something about skipping meals. Is it uh, is it advisable? Um, yeah. It, so now that depends on whether you have. A, a problem, a health issue already. If you have health issues like diabetes and you're on medications like insulin, you might not be able to skip meals because some insulin peak or start working way an hours, maybe four hours after you take it and you might need lunch. But if you don't have any health issues, you can skip meals. You can do intermittent, intermittent fasting as much as needed. Yeah, you can eat your first meal at 12 o'clock and still be okay. So there's nothing wrong with you if you decided to skip meals. Do you, and the reason why you're asking that question, do you have a problem that you're addressing that you feel that it needs to be addressed? Okay, I think that was okay. our last question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, no, if he has health, she has no health issues. Yeah, you can skip lunch if you want. Don't most most people who up to what? If you skip lunch, then you're not eating but drink. Those are all very good questions. More discussions. I look forward to uh, discussing and I will be there to cover more on diabetes for weight loss because there's always uh, 
can I lose weight and how can I keep it off? No. How to lose weight. I'm sure Joseph is coming up on November 27. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening. Do you have a comment? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, yeah, Rosemary, my uh, Washira. And uh, for more, we'll be engaging on 27th of uh, November. So we just want to extend an invitation to all the participants. Uh, Rosemary will be in Nairobi uh, on that day, 27th of November. She will be launching her book at All Saints Cathedral. And more details, more information uh, from what she has presented, you'll be able to get on that day. And I'm sure she'll also be giving uh, some uh, presentations along the same. So we're extending an invitation uh, now, and we still do more invitations along the way uh, so that we can be able to benefit from such kind of uh, discussions because it's real, real, these are real issues. Uh, we are either affected directly or you have someone you are taking care of. All of us are in one way or another uh, affected by what we are discussing tonight. Otherwise, we want just to post there, uh, courtesy of uh, Generational Leadership Network, uh, together with Rosemary Washira, we felt this is a good discussion. This is a healthy discussion uh, that will help us as leaders to be more effective and even to live longer and to be able to fulfill the will of God here on earth. So we'll want to pause here for tonight. Uh, we have also recorded this session, so we'll be able to share with you just to be able to replay and uh, think more about what we have shared. Uh, otherwise, from my end, thank you so much. I'll just pass to Rosemary Masharia for her closing comments, and then we'll be done for tonight. Thank you. Okay. I Yes, um, thank you so much, Joseph, and thank you, everybody. I see uh, a question from uh, Stephen Moridi about spices, and Jen Gitiomi. Oh, yeah, Jen said thank you for the information. Th uh, you're very welcome, Jen, and see, I'll see you soon in Nairobi. So spices are very important for blood pressure and blood sugar and all the other diseases. And I think if you're having uh, blood sugar and you use cinnamon and turmeric, you will benefit very much from that. So any spice that you can use, like the ones that are used in pilaus, you can add cinnamon to your, uh, to your tea, you can add cinnamon to your rice or your bread. Very, very good way of controlling uh, the blood sugar. So, yeah, so I, I really um, like all spices. Turmeric especially is good for cancer. It's also good for diabetes. Um, but um, turmeric does not get absorbed that easily unless you combine it with something like black pepper. So if you don't have any gut problems, like black pepper doesn't irritate your stomach. Yeah, so feel free to start using that, adding it to your food. And again, so thank you, everybody. And uh, what happened to my big brother, Masharia? Any comments? I see you in here. Thank you so much for uh, participating. I really enjoyed doing this presentation and I look forward to doing a longer one, a longer version in Nairobi. Thank you so much, uh, Rosemary. A longer one is coming on 27th, I guess, on uh, November. So uh, all of us who have been able to get a, a glimpse of this, uh, let's book the date. And I'm sure we'll also have a one-on-one -on -one engagement with you just to be able to learn more from you and uh, from your experience and also from the professional experience uh, in terms of your field. So we want to pause there tonight and uh, appreciate all the participants, uh, the 18 of you plus who have been able to join us tonight. Very grateful for this opportunity. 
Uh, most of you have shared uh, your contacts. If you haven't, please feel free to share your uh, email so that we can email you this, um, uh, this recording and we'll also in email you an invite from uh, Rosemary Washira for 27th of November. Uh, she will be launching her book. Uh, this content that she has shared is part of her book and also she'll be able to expound more on that day. So thank you so much. Just want to say God bless you all. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, those who are in Kenya, have a good night. Uh, for Rosemary, have a good uh, lunch. Is it lunchtime or so? Yeah, uh, it's almost lunchtime. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so enjoy your lunch. It's almost 12. Yeah, so mm -hmm. enjoy your lunch. Those who are joining us from any other country, whatever time it is, it has been a pleasure. And God bless you and thank you so much. All right. So uh, I hope you don't mind, Carrie, staying on the. Uh, are we able to stay on, on for a few minutes uh, when the guests leave? Yeah, sure, sure. We can do that because uh, the next meeting is coming at at eight p.m. Eight p.m. Okay. Yes. So uh, participants, you are free to leave at your pleasure. And uh, we are grateful again for joining. Thank you so much.